Look at this giant pile of gear from Flywoo. Check this out. This is Flywoo's new 1.6 inch open prop quadcopter, the Dragonfly 1S Nano. And they've sent me one of every flavor, analog, HD0, and walk snail. Sorry, DJI, you're too thick for a quadcopter this small. And I gotta set these guys up before we can review them. So yeah, let's make a video about it. I don't even know what kind of video this is gonna be. Is it not really an unboxing, although I am gonna unbox them? Is that really a setup tutorial, although I am gonna set them up? I just gotta do all this shit and it pains me to not make a video about it. So come along, enjoy. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn some, some, I hope you learned something today. I don't know what it's gonna be. Let's do it. So we're gonna start with the analog version of this. And if you are watching this video as some kind of a tutorial, then I'm gonna put timestamps and chapter markers down in the video description below. So for example, if you bought the HD01 and you wanna see what I do for the setup of that, you will be able to easily jump to that. But we're gonna start with good old analog. And I immediately noticed there's two analog versions, the DC Dead, Dead Cat, I assume, and the FR, which I guess stands for freestyle and is most likely a true X geometry. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. We have the Dead Cat style here where the front motors are pushed out to the side and that keeps the props from being visible in the camera. At least that's the assumption. Uh, and the FR or freestyle version where the props are in a square and that gives more neutral handling for pure freestyle performance. I'm not sure how much difference there's gonna be here. Probably when I get to reviewing them, I'll test them out. First thing I'm gonna need to do is bind the receiver and, oh, oh, very nice. Is this that new battery connector? The new GMB battery connector that is kind of compatible with BT 2.0, but isn't? Oh, no. I sure hope they included batteries. Oh, they did, isn't that nice? Um, Interesting. I am sad because this connector, I don't think a BT 2.0 battery is gonna plug in here, not without some finagling. And I have some really good quality uh, BT 2.0 batteries. I don't know how good these 450s are. Are they folded cell? Nice that they're putting a high performance battery connector on here though. It's nice that it's not pH 2.0. First thing we gotta do is bind it. All of these guys have Express LRS receivers on them. You can kind of see right here, the EP2 style receiver with the ceramic antenna, uh, nice and small and light. And I'm hoping that when I plug in USB, the receiver will power up so I don't have to plug in a battery to bind it. And sure enough, ah, we got a little LED right here from the receiver, great. Receiver is powered up. The way that I like to bind Express LRS is, we got a video going through these steps. I like to use the Wi-Fi hotspot web browser method. To do that, we're just gonna wait till this starts fast flashing. Once it begins fast flashing, we know it is in Wi-Fi hotspot mode. We can go to our Wi-Fi network here and we can look for Express LRS RX. The password is quote Express LRS, all lowercase. And then in our browser, we go to 10.0.0.1. And I'm very, very happy to learn that it comes with ExpressLS 3.0 on the receivers. That means I don't have to update the firmware on the receivers at all. It is 3.0.0 and there are a few newer versions, but I'm not gonna sweat that. 3.0.0 is fine. I can just type my binding phrase in and save and reboot. And we should bind up immediately. Bingo, bound, fantastic. Now that it's bound, I can go to the Betaflight receiver tab and I do see that my channels are working uh, as I move the sticks. The channels are moving. I'll check my channel mapping. Throttle is throttle, yaw is yaw, pitch is pitch, and roll is roll. If those weren't correct, the way to fix that would be to rearrange the channel map here. The other thing I'm gonna do is check my endpoints so that the channels go from 1000 to 2000, 1000 to 2000, and so on and so on. If you need more information about that, I'll put a video with more instructions down in the video description. And you, you can, I've got a tutorial, but this isn't the time to go into infinite detail. Another thing we need to do is set up my aux modes, you know, so that I can like arm the quad and other stuff. And the way that I do that is I go to my presets tab and here in my custom Betaflight presets repo, uh, I have a preset for my standard aux configuration. And I just need to pick that and agree and uh, save and reboot and it'll be good to go. If you wanna know more about manually setting up your aux modes, I've got a video about that linked in the video description. And if you wanna know about setting up a custom Betaflight presets repo, well, like one out of 3000 of you are actually gonna to wanna to do that, but I do have a video about how to do that as well. Interesting. 
On the HD0 quad, there does not appear to be a standalone receiver. I'm guessing that the receiver is built into the flight controller. And my first question is whether this is a serial receiver or an SPI receiver. The way to answer that question is to plug in, look, go to Betaflight, go to the receiver tab, and we see that the receiver type is set to serial. That's good because, well, if you want to know why I don't like SPI receivers, as Express LRS receivers, I've got a video about that. I'll link it in the video description. Um, I'm happy to hear that this is a serial receiver. And we are good to go there. Uh, the other thing we might do is update the firmware on the HD0 video transmitter just to make sure it's on the latest. And I'm extremely happy to see that they have included this updating uh, adapter that comes with the HD0 VTX. It would be silly if they didn't, but I've seen dumber things with bind and fly quads where they're won't include all the accessories that go with all the things that come with the quad. And in this case, you would not be able to update the firmware on this VTX at all if you didn't have this. To update the firmware, we're going to take this adapter that comes with the quadcopter, uh, and we're going to plug the little skinny end into the VTX, and we're going to plug the big thick end into our goggles. Uh, in my case, I have the HD0 goggles, and the firmware updating plug is right here. And that's going to plug into the VTX right here. We are going to need a battery to power up the VTX, and we're going to need a fan to keep the VTX from overheating, uh, just to be on the safe side. If you want to know more about this fan, I made a video about it, uh, and I'll link that in the video description below. We'll go to the HC0 website, and we'll find the latest firmware and download it. Okay, so we'll put an SD card in... And uh, let's see, we've got the Whoop Light VTX. There's the firmware, put that on our SD card. Put that SD card in the goggles. We'll go ahead and power up the VTX. Inside the goggles, we will go down to firmware, update VTX. Oh, there we go, success. Now let's set up the walk snail video transmitter. And the first thing we gotta do is bind it. Well, the bind button for my walk snail is right here. Oh, wow, oh, that looks, I see. It's not a high definition OSD, that's for sure. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know is what firmware is on there. They shipped it with, oof, 2832.10. Like how far back is that? That is uh, October, 2022. Wow, that's, a, that's an old firmware. I'm gonna go ahead and update that. Uh, I think I'm gonna update it 33.39.10 is a beta and has some performance issues, so I'm going to update it to 32.37.10, I believe. And once again, I'm super happy they've included this adapter. It would be silly if they didn't, but I wouldn't put it past some manufacturers. This is the adapter that you use to update firmware and download uh, from the onboard storage of the Avatar VTX. Be really careful plugging it in as that plug is not the most durable. We take that Sky file, we put it onto the USB drive on the VTX, and then we hold down the VTX button for about seven seconds until the light goes out, and then we wait. And when it comes back on green, the firmware update's done. Let's unplug that. And now that that's all said and done, we can go into the menu, settings, device, device info, and we have matching firmware versions 32, 37, 10 on the goggles and the uh, quadcopter. There is one other thing I see here that I think I got to address. The next thing that's about to happen in this video is that I'm going to discover that they shipped these quadcopters with a key feature of Betaflight 4.4 disabled. And this feature doesn't matter if you're using an analog video transmitter, but it really matters if you're using HD0 or walk snail. It's the high definition canvas feature. Before I show you how to fix what they've done wrong, I wanna take a second and remind you that I have a Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. There's various benefits to being a patron, like you get access to my Discord server, so you can chat with people about FPV, get help with troubleshooting. There's even a buy, sell, trade forum. Patrons also get access to uh, podcast downloads of my live streams. And I have recently started experimenting with doing early uploads of my content on Patreon. But that's not why I hope you sign up for my Patreon. I hope you sign up for my Patreon because you want all those things, but also just because because you've been enjoying my content so long and hopefully learning stuff and benefiting from it to the point where you just go, 
yeah, it's time. It's time for me. He's earned it. If today's the day that you have that feeling, there's a link in the video description where you can sign up for my Patreon. I'd love to have you as a supporter. If today's not the day, hey, look, I get it. I'll listen to 57 episodes of a podcast before I finally sign up as a supporter. Hopefully that day will come. I'm going to keep making the content. I hope you keep watching it. Take a look at the on-screen display. Do you see that the on-screen display is all sort of clustered up in the upper left-hand corner of the screen? The reason for that is that both Walk Snail and Betaflight support a high-definition OSD. What that means is that instead of having a 4.3 screen, like, like analog or standard definition video, it has a wide screen, and it also has uh, smaller letters, so you get more stuff on screen. But if we go to the Betaflight OSD tab, we can see they shipped us this quadcopter with standard definition OSD configured. And I'm gonna guess that the reason for that is they use the same OSD configuration for all of their quadcopters. So this is basically set up the same as an analog quad, but it's a problem because the goggles are expecting high definition, and so when you give it this low definition, it ends up all clustered over on the left side of the screen. Now, I do want to show you that in the Walk Snail goggles, we can go settings, display, and OSD position, and we can use the joystick to move that over and down. That, we don't, we're not going to do that, though. And the reason we're not going to do that is that they've shipped us this quadcopter with Betaflight 441 on it, and Betaflight 44 supports high-definition OSD. So we'll just enable that, and everything will be amazing. So uh, the first thing we need to do is go to the Ports tab and make note of which UART has MSP enabled. That's this option here. It looks like UART number one. And then in Betaflight 44, we will also see we have this option, MSP plus DisplayPort enabled here in the peripherals. That's telling us that the video transmitter is on UART number one. So then we will go to the presets tab and we will search for avatar. And here is the OSD preset for the avatar HD. Make sure that set HD OSD is enabled and we will choose UART one here. And then we will pick and save and reboot. Yeah, it's, it's not working. We've enabled the high definition OSD, but the canvas size is still the same. What we need to do is go to the CLI tab and put these lines in the CLI tab. Set OSD canvas width equals 50, set OSD canvas height equals 20, and then type the word save. Now, do you see that what we see here in the Betaflight OSD tab correctly matches what we see in the goggles. Now the only thing to do is to like have a OSD layout that actually freaking makes sense. That's not right. Why is that? Ah! Ah! So it looks like we are two or three characters off from the edge of the screen. Why? Well, let's do this. Let's see. The canvas width is set to 50. Does it need to be 53? Is that what the problem was? If we set that to 53, do we now see that what we see in the Betaflight configurator matches what we see in the goggles? That's what we're going for. All right, we're good to go there. Well, since I had that problem with the high definition OSD on the walk snail quad, I thought it was responsible to look at the HD zero quad and sure enough, it has the exact same issue. Uh, I think, yeah, notice that the OSD kind of cuts off right here-ish. It's not taking up the full screen, but the fix is almost the same. Did this one ship? I didn't do this. This one ships with the high definition OSD pre-configured, but the OSD itself is not actually laid out correctly. If I drag this all the way over here, does that work right? I think it does. It is. That's the very edge of the screen and... Let's see here, down at the bottom. That's the very edge of the screen there. It's all set up correctly. It's just they haven't laid out the OSD right. That must be why I had 50 by 18 in incorrectly for walk snail originally. Walk snail should be 53 by 20. Huh. Well, anyway, cool. And with that, they are basically set up and ready to fly. Just got to put the props on, charge up a battery, and get out there and review them. And if you're interested in seeing their full review, I'm going to go ahead and put a card on screen for that as well. You might be interested in the Firefly Nano Baby 
2S. Uh, that is the 2S 2-inch two version of this quad. And I'll put, I've, that review's already done, did it months ago. I'll put a card on screen for that as well if you want to compare and contrast these quadcopters. And those links are also in the video description if you want to check them out. I'll see you there.